Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to JFD Traders Tea Time with me, Dinosaur Song Charles, because today is the 24th of April 2020. So, yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Friday's recorded afternoon session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. Uh, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk, the risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so um, also just before we jump in into the charts, a uh, quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos and of course our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD Research page which we also update on a daily basis. So yep, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the Research tab right there on the top guys and like I said, it'll take you to this page uh, which I believe you can find something useful here or should I say where you can find something useful. So um, now then, uh, quickly, let's have a quick update on the figure here. Um, I think that number has already updated automatically mm, from, yep, well, because we were below 2,700,000 uh, this morning. So, yep, the number, okay, the number has risen. So now it's to uh, 2,729,000. So, well, okay, the number continues to rise. However, not dramatically as it was before. So, yep, uh, for now, guys, keep your eyes on this as well. Uh, continue monitoring, and I hope you're staying safe. Uh, now then, uh, jumping into a few charts very quickly. So, the first one I want to touch on here is the S&P 500. Now, the market is not open yet, but um, looking at this picture, and this is I'm not going to spend too much time on this one uh, because we I've talked about this one yesterday and we're still waiting for a clear breakthrough one of these highlighted areas. Either a pop above, we need either we need a pop above the 2879 zone, which is the uh, the high of last week, or in other words, the current highest point of April. Um, if so, if we do get such a such a move higher here, then yes, this would confirm a forthcoming higher high and we could start aiming for higher levels. However, uh, we should remain very careful near these two EMAs here, the 100, one, the 100 EMA and the 200 EMA on the daily chart here, which could in a way provide some a bit of decent kind of resistance initially. Um, so, yep, uh, but we will consider such a move only if we get a push above the 2879 zone. In terms of the downside, again, the same idea remains. We need to see a drop below the 2,729 zone. That's basically the lowest point of uh, June 2019. So, yep, uh, keep your eyes on this one. But um, <clears throat> for now, uh, even looking at the cash index right now, I mean, it seems that the uh, index looks like it wants to travel a little bit higher. However, um, however, well, we will remain neutral as long as it stays in this in this little territory here between these two levels. So the price currently on the cash index is around 2,810, roughly around there. So basically just slightly above where it has closed yesterday. So keep your eyes on this, keep your eyes on these two levels, and let's see how this is going to play out. Um, now then, you... Uh, the CAC 40, the French index. So we haven't looked at this one for quite a while. Let me just clear up the chart here a little bit. Um, and basically we can see that the index is kind of moving sideways a little bit. So in a way, initially initially we were uh, having a potential, a nice, uh, well, uh, initially it was the we had an idea here that it could be a nice uh, as ascending triangle here, which, which could possibly break to the upside. However, as you can see, it kind of uh, drifted sideways and kind of automatically broke this uh, this upside support line. So no, this is no longer valid. What we're going to focus now on is also in a similar fashion, like with the um, the S and P. Uh, we'll keep an eye on this little range here. So this is a, a little bit of a more 
tight range than the S&P 500, but still uh, it's a range. However, uh, the potential exit could happen earlier. So keep your eyes on these two areas. Um, so roughly what we're looking here at is um, the 4,545 zone, roughly around here on the top and on the downside, the 4,333 mark. So in a way, a breakthrough one of these could in a way open the path towards a, uh, a further directional move. So, yep, that's why for now we're just sitting back and uh, just watching this one and waiting for that uh, confirmation break. So keep your eyes on this. Uh, gold. Now, quick update on gold. Um, this morning I talked about this one and I talked about this one yesterday as well. And what I was saying that if we get a nice break above the 1723 territory and we really get a nice daily close above this territory, then yep, uh, higher levels could be met. Now, this morning we were testing this 1723 zone again, but as you can see, it acted as a good area of support. So basically, long story short for now uh, we are still more positive than negative um, however we'll be very careful near these two barriers need the 1747 uh, zone 7 or even a way you could round it up towards the 1748 which is the high uh, the current highest point of April uh, near the current highest point of April and slightly above that we do have the 1754 mark here uh, this is basically the highest point of November 2012 so uh, just quick quickly if I'll scroll back here into history that's the level that I'm talking about. So the highest point of November. Um, and uh, yep, that's what we're keeping close eye on. So, but if those two get broken, then well, I mean, higher levels could be met. So, but for now, let's keep it short and simple. Uh, for now, we're targeting the 1748 territory. We'll see how it performs around there. And after that, we'll take it from there. Um, in terms of the downside, it's still the same idea remains. The 1703-04 zone, a break of that, we, that's what we need in order to consider a lower area. So keep your eyes on that one. Uh, Brent oil. So um, not much has changed from this morning analysis. Basically, the same idea uh, is still in play. We need to see and we need to wait and to see where this commodity will close today because it's currently holding on its uh, or I would say it's kind of oscillating around the lowest point of March near the uh, 21.64 zone so uh, it's just kind of moving up and down up and down so for now we're not doing anything it just uh, as I've mentioned this morning and this is what I was suggesting uh, basically to keep an eye on the highs and low the high and the low of yesterday so basically if we get a nice pop above the high of yesterday then yep there is a potential for this one to drift a little bit higher however we're going to still very, be very careful and cautious um, but if it drops below the low of yesterday then well I mean lower levels could be met you can see that the commodity managed to drift closer to that level closer to this 9 um, sorry, is it 20.10 zone, which is the low of yesterday? It managed to get closer to that, but didn't quite reach it and uh, then reversed back to the upside and it's now back to this uh, lowest point of March. And uh, yep, for now, we're just monitoring this one and wanted, when we're wanting to see we're wanting to see to what where it will go further. Uh, but to be honest, if this is going to end up like this, uh, if this is going to end up like this today, then well, I mean, we could be could be having a nice start of uh, the week next week. So the same as we had this week. So yep, guys, keep your eyes on this one. Let's see how this is going to play out. But um, for now, we're not doing anything with it. Uh, Litecoin, quick update on Litecoin. I spoke about this uh, crypto recently, and uh, what I was talking about was the to keep, for you to keep an eye on this little uh, kind of short-term uh, triangle pattern here, which, as you can see, got broken to the upside. The the the, the crypto started traveling higher and uh, pushed above its 200 EMA on the four-hour chart as well, um, but kind of really uh, is struggling. We can see that it's struggling with this high, with the uh, the high of the 18th of April near the 44.55 zone. And uh, for now, you can see that this kind of uh, barrier is acting as a good area of resistance and uh, although we did get an overshoot here um, today but still the the bears kind of dragged this one lower very quickly so now we're back below this area so again we, we would like to see here from the let's say from the very short-term perspective 
uh, is uh, a nice good close at least of a four hour candle above this barrier above this 44.55 zone because then uh, we could at least uh, maybe get a little bit a little bit more comfortable with higher areas but still as I've mentioned previously for us to um, get excited here with either of the directions we would prefer to see a breakthrough one of these highlighted areas here either a push above the 47.67 zone uh, which is the the high, uh, the current high, the current highest point of April, or we would like to see a drop below the 37.94 zone here, which is the current lowest point of April. So, basically, we need these breaks here in order to get um, a, a further directional move. For now, we're just gonna stay put and keep an eye on this on the price action. Uh, AUD and ZD. So here, the situation is quite interesting so I've talked about this one uh, this this morning basically what I was saying that we need to see a nice good break above this 1.0625 uh, zone in order to kind of get comfortable with higher levels but what we would like to see is not only a break but we would also like to see a close of a daily candle above it now we will start considering higher levels if we get a four-hour candle close because as you can see not only daily candles struggle to close but the four-hour candles close struggle to close as well here above this territory so we will start considering higher levels if we get a close at least of a four hour candle above this above this barrier above this 1.0625 zone but um, if we do get a break, uh, if we do get a close there, then yes, we will aim for higher levels, but we'll be very careful just in case this decides to reverse somehow sharply to the downside. But again, for that, we will keep an eye on the daily candle. And uh, if the daily candle stays above this territory, then yep, there is there are more chances for this one to drift further north. Let me just jump back into a daily chart. And then, yep, we could consider these slightly higher levels. Um, now then, uh, in terms of other pairs, like for example, GBPJPY, I haven't looked at this one for quite a while, but let me just clear up the chart here a little bit and we'll start fresh. But uh, so basically, of course, uh, it did have a nice reversal here after uh, around mid, uh, mid March and it started pushing back to the upside. Um, it managed to reach an area somewhere around the 135.75 zone from which it started re reversing back down. Um, however, it is still uh, struggling to stay, um, it's struggling to kind of close below this little area right here, the 132.44 zone, which is the low of the 1st of April. Now, it, d it does get these overshoots, but um, it's struggling to kind of remain below this, or should I say, have a decent close below it, so on a daily chart. And uh, for now, uh, we will continue monitoring this. If we get a nice daily close here below this, then yes, we will aim for lower levels. But again, for now, as you can see, it is where it is, and uh, we're not really, we can't really do anything with it. We just continue observing this one. But if we do get a sharp move lower here, now this is where it could end up uh, being a nice move to the downside here, uh, where the next potential target. Now there's a bunch of targets that we could consider, of course, but one of the areas uh, to to keep an eye on could be around here, the 127.38 zone or a little bit above that, we do have this little target here, uh, the 129.46. But again, uh, we'll reevaluate everything then if when we see uh, a nice good drop, strong drop below this 132.44 zone. In terms of the upside, we'll take a very conservative approach and wait for a push above the uh, current highest point of April, which is around the 135.75 zone. And then we will aim for higher levels. But again, with the higher levels, you should be very careful here because we do have the 100 EMA, the 200 EMA here on the daily chart. So these could uh, provide a decent resistance. Um, slightly above that, we do have this little target the 138.68 that's the high of the 5th of March and uh, in a way uh, what you could do is in a way you could just also target the highest point of March which is around the 139.18 so good potential target good potential area but uh, again for now the upside 
could be slightly off the table unless it pushes above the 135.75 zone. Uh, USDCHF. So here I've talked about this one this week and basically what I was saying that uh, we need to see a nice good push above this barrier right here, the 0 0.9727 in order to kind of aim for higher levels and uh, our next target could be around here only near the 0 0.9797 and uh, this is exactly what happened. We had it today, we had well, yesterday we had a nice break here, a strong push higher and today we had a test of this barrier right here which provided fantastic resistance as you can see now the the rate is dropping lower however it still remains above this previous breakout barrier that i talked about so now all eyes are on this because if it provides decent support if it now acts as a good area of support then we could see a nice rebound and a push to the upside again so for now uh we are very careful here. We're keeping a close eye on the 0 0.9727 zone. And uh, if it holds, we could see a nice rebound to push higher. For those who are more on the cautious side, you could just wait for a push above the 0 0.9797 and then, yep, we at attack some higher levels. Like, for example, the highest point of March near the 0 0.99 level. Uh, in terms of the downside, now we will start considering the downside if we get a drop below the 0 0.9727 uh, area and we, s we see a drop back below the two, uh, the 100. EMA or even preferably to be honest uh, we would prefer to see a drop below the 21 EMA here on the daily chart and that's uh, shown here as this yellow line so or maybe a little bit orangey orangey yellow line here so uh, so yeah and then we will target this little area of support near the 0 0.9588 zone so for now guys Keep your eyes on this one. Keep your eyes on the 0 0.9727. Let's see if it provides good area of support. If it does, then we could see a nice rebound. Euro CHF. Um, Euro CHF, I haven't looked at this one for ages. And uh, basically, the overall picture here is, of, well, of course, it's not very good here for the... Um, well, I would say it's a tricky one because, I mean, I, I wanted to say that it's not very good for the buyers. However, um, I mean, the further it goes down, the more opportunities it presents to go along. However, um, well, to be honest, we cannot really rush into anything yet. Uh, we need some confirmation breaks here. And as you can see, all these kind of reversals, uh, even a, a push above the 21-day EMA here, kind of ended up with a, with a failure and uh, it uh, drifted back down and kind of continued to create these lower lows. So that's why uh, if, some, if some of you are thinking that this is a good opportunity to step in again, I, you probably were thinking the same uh, thing somewhere around here and look at where it ended up it still continued to drift lower or even you could you could have thought about uh, entering around here somewhere as well so but again uh, as you can see now it's kind of uh, again now it's trying to make its way higher um, it is if we look at the four hour chart probably this is going to be a little bit easier you can see that this is popping higher right now um, however in from the very short term perspective now this is where i'm going to point this out from the very short term perspective we will wait for a push above this 1.0532 zone and only then aim for some higher levels but still you can see that we do have a bunch of areas of resistance here near the 100 ema on the four hour chart near the 200 ema on the four hour chart so um, this is where the holdup may occur but if it pushes above this yes there is a there is more chance for this one to push higher however look at the same story what happened here in the end of march it also pushed above the 200 ema on the four hour chart but then kind of reversed back below it and uh, well ended up drifting lower so that's why let's be very careful if we get a nice break above this territory and we see the pair climbing all the way higher here and let's say for example you're still in a position uh, after break, a break of a break here then the suggestion quickly would be to put your stop loss just in front of this just in case this reverses back down takes you out and to be honest even if it takes you out uh, slightly even if we do get a like let's say a false breakout here to the downside and then the pair recover re, uh, reverses versus back to the upside there is still an opportunity to step in so that's why I don't try to kind of uh, don't try to capture everything just try to play it smart basically if it dr if it breaks below this and you, if it stops you out somewhere around here on the break even that's fine there will be plenty of more opportunities to step in again but um, it would be better if uh, if this would break 
to the downside here again and uh, it would continue drifting lower and create a new lower low. Um, now with this one here we're also keeping a close eye on this 1.050304 level uh, so a drop below this would confirm a forthcoming lower low and the deeper extensions to the downside could be possible. And uh, finally Euro USD. So here I'm going to stay on the four hour chart straight away and this is what I talked about this morning. So basically what I was saying that if we get a drop below the uh, 1.0756 then yep uh, there is a possibility for this one to drift lower um, yes it did it did drift lower um, however it didn't stay here I mean the four hour candle didn't stay um, it didn't stay below this territory and it kind of as you can see now it's popping higher um, so basically now we're still gonna remain neutral don't get me wrong because ideally we would prefer to see a nice uh, close here below this territory below the the uh, 1.0756 and if we look at the daily chart as well actually um, you can see that the this 1.0777 that uh, the level that I kept, kept talking about um, it kind of continues to provide decent support here and clearly visible on the daily chart so for now for today probably we're just gonna leave this one because even with the upside we would like to see a push above this downside line and a push above the 200 EMA on the four hour chart before examining higher levels until then uh, to be honest we will just continue observing this one and just uh, remain somewhat neutral I would say because uh, as you can see it did fail to stay below this 1.0756 so in a way that means that the the, the bulls um, the bulls are, are kind of feeling uh, a little bit more comfortable at this point in time however we want to see how those bulls will uh, feel near this downside line if they're they have enough strength to to push uh, the pair above this downside line then yes uh, we could consider maybe some upside some further upside but if it's they struggle to do so then well the bears might step in again and drive this one lower so keep your eyes on this one so guys I really hope you found it useful and I really appreciate your time guys I, I really appreciate you sticking around and watching this one till the end um, so um, yep I hope you have a good uh, relaxing weekend guys stay fresh stay safe stay uh, stay positive Positive and uh, yep, uh, everything is gonna be fine, guys. I mean, we will have a you, you will have a beautiful weekend. Uh, try to come back on Monday, re all relaxed, relaxed, and uh, yeah, guys, just enjoy enjoy your time. Um, if you still have to work on the weekend, well, I hope it it passes uh, quickly and let's say not very tiring. But anyway, in in general, guys try to remain positive and uh, yep I'll see you on Monday and uh, catch my video on Monday uh, at a little bit at maybe after uh, six o'clock GMT time uh, where we're gonna have a, a look at some of these instruments some new ones and uh, yep we'll take it from there so thank you very much guys and bye bye